My innocent attempt to help my son navigate his situation should backfired, turning his now girlfriend ice cold toward Maine with my son determined to myself. Can I mend the rift in our family before it's too late? At the age of 50, I find myself in the midst of a perplexing and somewhat distressing situation involving my son's girlfriend who has consistently been somewhat distant and cool towards me. My son and his girlfriend, both 25, have been dating for a while now, but the roots of the issue go back about three years to a time before they were officially a couple. Back then, my son was involved in what he described as a situationship with her. This term was new to me at the time, implying a relationship that was more than friendship, but without clear commitment. He lavished her with luxurious gifts and frequently invited her over, yet when pressed he admitted that they weren't officially together. She was an attractive online influencer, considering her options among several interested parties. About seven months into this undefined relationship, I met a young woman through my work who seemed particularly smitten with my son. It was during a typical bustling afternoon at my small boutique a place adorned with colorful fabrics and eclectic decorations that reflected my personal taste for the vibrant and unusual. Among my employees was a young woman recently hired who brought an infectious energy and a smile that could brighten even the dreariest days. As we arranged new stock one day, she casually mentioned her admiration for my son, having seen photos of him on my desk. Her interest peaked as she spoke of his achievements and hobbies, which I had shared in passing during our coffee breaks. My kid was in what he called a situationship with an internet influencer, which is an informal and seemingly open arrangement, so I saw no problem with putting him in front of someone who was obviously interested. After all, the influencer was still weighing her options among several suitors, and he had previously made it clear that the connection was not exclusive. Given the circumstances, I believe that giving this young lady my son's contact information and urging her to give him a call was a harmless enough gesture. It could be fun for him to meet when I brought up the interaction with my kid later. His response was at best hesitant. With a vague, okay mom, and a non-committal shrug, he immediately changed the subject. There was no quick follow-up or spark of interest. It appeared to be just one more thing tucked away in the recesses of his memory, not important enough to take action on just now. My son's response was non-committal, and nothing immediate came of it, but eventually he and the influencer formalized their relationship. However, as the months progressed, the dynamics of his relationship with the influencer began to shift. Whether my introduction played any role in this change was unclear, but about three to four months later, he and the influencer decided to commit to each other officially. They started appearing together more publicly, their social media filled with coupled photos and sweet captions that marked their relationship status clearly to all. It was a transition from a loose, undefined connection to something more solid and acknowledged, which took me by surprise given the casual nature of their earlier interactions. Recently, wanting to clear the air and address any potential misunderstandings, I approached her during one of her visits to our home. I attempted an apology if my actions had seemed intrusive. Her response was forthright, suggesting I should have stayed out of my son's personal affairs as the boundaries of their early relationship, though unclear to me, were set by them. This notion of variable boundaries in each situationship was a revelation to me and clearly a point of contention. My daughter, seeing the tension, suggested somewhat flippantly that I seek advice via Reddit, a reflection of her frustration with the situation. The girlfriend's reaction to our conversation was not hopeful. She became even colder, which worries me as my son is quite serious about their future together. The setting was our family living room, a space that usually felt cozy and inviting with its soft plush sofas and the gentle hum of the grandfather clock in the corner. However, on that particular afternoon, the atmosphere felt tense and uncomfortably charged. It was just the two of us, as I had asked her to stay back for a few minutes after a family lunch 
hoping to discuss our misunderstandings privately. I chose my words carefully, trying to convey my sincerity and regret if my past actions had overstepped her boundaries. The autumn light filtered through the sheer curtains, casting soft patterns on the carpet, a stark contrast to the hardness of the conversation. As I spoke, I noticed her posture remained rigid, her hands tightly clasped in her lap. Her face, usually expressive and animated, was set in a mask of polite detachment. When she replied, her voice was cool and measured, her words carefully chosen to maintain a diplomatic but distant tone. She reminded me that the dynamics of her relationship with my son, even in its early stages, were for them to navigate and not for outsiders to interfere with. Her response left little room for the warmth or understanding I had hoped to foster. It was clear that my attempt at an apology hadn't thawed the frost between us. After a brief and somewhat stilted conversation, she excused herself, claiming a need to catch up on work. The way she quickly gathered her things and avoided eye contact as she left underscored the chilly atmosphere. Watching her leave, I felt a sinking feeling of unease. My son is deeply in love with her, often discussing their plans for the future with a bright enthusiasm. His seriousness about their relationship made her coldness towards me all the more troubling. It was clear that repairing this rift would require more than just a single conversation, and the path forward seemed daunting as I sat alone in the now silent room, pondering my next steps. Adding to the complexity, I've had limited interactions with her, but one significant episode did little to help our relationship. When she decided to drop out of college to pursue her career as an online influencer full-time, I expressed my concerns bluntly. She was close to completing her degree, and I saw her decision as potentially short-sighted. I voiced these thoughts more forcefully than I perhaps should have, given that I was not contributing financially to her education. Now, reflecting on these events, I find myself questioning how best to mend this fractured relationship. My approach so far has evidently not been effective, and with my son's deepening commitment to her, the need to reconcile, for the sake of family harmony, feels urgent. I am contemplating ways to possibly bridge this gap, seeking to understand her perspective more fully and to communicate my intentions without overstepping boundaries. It's a delicate balance to strike, one that I hope, with time and effort, can be achieved. Are there any ways I can salvage the relationship? She didn't seem to appreciate our conversation and is getting even colder. My son, however, seems to be really determined to marry her. Update. I wasn't planning to share more at this point, preferring instead to keep things simple and civil. However, events took a turn that forced the issue out into the open. My daughter felt compelled to share our family troubles with my husband, perhaps hoping for a resolution that seemed beyond my reach. My husband, typically a steady presence though often absent due to his work which requires him to travel, is deeply invested in the well-being of our family. His career has enabled us to live more comfortably than many in our community, but it comes with the cost of his frequent absence. This time, he returned unexpectedly early and walked into the midst of unresolved tension. Unhappy with what he perceived as ongoing issues with our son, he made the drastic decision to ask him to leave our home, a course of action I hadn't anticipated and wasn't prepared for. I wasn't there when he arrived. I only came back to find that my son had already packed some essentials and left. The reality of seeing his space empty brought an ache, a deep, unsettling feeling that things were spiraling out of my control. Meanwhile, my son's messages filled my phone, his words echoing his hurt and disbelief at being cast out, describing our actions as heartless. With my husband leaving town again the following day, the responsibility to manage the fallout and maintain our home fell heavily on my shoulders. He assured me that he would handle things concerning our son from afar, a statement that left me both relieved and distressed. How could we bridge such a significant rift with distance between us? My daughter, aligning with her father, showed little sympathy for her brother. Her reactions have been fierce, 
further straining the delicate threads holding us together. Whenever my son has attempted to return home to talk, their interactions have escalated quickly into shouting matches, leaving no room for the calm discussion we so desperately need. In the family home where warmth and laughter once permeated the air, a heavy tension had settled, thick and unyielding. My daughter had taken a firm stance alongside her father, reflecting his decision with unwavering support that bordered on harshness toward her brother. Her loyalty, while admirable in some contexts, added layers of complexity to our current familial strife. Now, every attempt at communication seemed to devolve into conflict. On one such occasion, my son, hopeful reconciliation, knocked softly at the front door, his eyes searching for any sign of welcome. As I opened the door, the hopeful glimmer in his eyes faded almost instantly when he saw his sister standing behind me, her stance rigid, her expression stony. Before a word could be spoken, the air thickened with unspoken accusations and defenses. My son, usually reserved, began with a tentative, can we talk, aiming to bridge the chasm that had formed between him and the family. However, his sister, interpreting his return as defiance, responded sharply, Why are you here? You know dad's decision. The conversation quickly escalated as voices rose. My daughter, mirroring her father's earlier decisiveness, accused her brother of being thoughtless and irresponsible. My son, frustrated and hurt, raised his voice in defense, pleading for understanding rather than judgment. The exchange grew louder, words flying like arrows, each one hitting far from the heart of the matter, his need for family support and our need to address issues as a family. As their mother, standing between them, I felt each word acutely witnessing the thread of our family fabric stretching thin, threatening to snap. The living room, once a sanctuary of familial love, had transformed into a battleground of words and wills, leaving no room for the calm, constructive discussion that might heal our wounds. In these moments, the path to reconciliation seemed obscured by hurt feelings and hardened positions. The challenge lay in cooling the tempers and softening the hearts hardened by recent events. I knew that finding a way back to each other would require more than just time. It would need a willingness from all sides to listen, to understand, and to forgive. The conflict has left me feeling as though our family is being pulled apart at the seams. The very foundation of our unity seems shaken. I've always cherished the harmony within our household, never imagining a scenario where one of my children would be estranged like this. In my heart, I've never supported the idea of my son being kicked out of the house. I yearn for a way to mend what has been broken. In the meantime, I have set aside some money for my son, just a small amount to help him get by until we can find a better solution. It's a practical measure, but it feels like a band-aid over a much larger wound. I appreciate the supportive comments many of you have shared. They've been a comfort in a situation where easy answers seem out of reach. I'm aware that my explanations might not capture all the nuances of our family dynamics or the complexity of the emotions involved. Still, I hold on to hope for a resolution that can bring us back together. I promise to provide an update when there's a positive development. Until then, thank you for your kindness and understanding. Edit. As weeks turned into months, the rift within our family began to show signs of mending, albeit slowly and with considerable effort from all sides. My son, undeterred by the challenges at home, continued his relationship with the influencer, his determination to marry her growing stronger despite the familial discord. Eventually, he proposed to her, and she accepted with a joy that was palpable even through the photographs he sent us. Seeing them together, genuinely happy and looking forward to building a future, sparked a change in my own heart and slowly in the dynamics of our family. I realized that regardless of past misunderstandings, my role as a mother was to support my son's choices and happiness. Acknowledging the need to bridge the gap, I invited my son and his fiancée to a family dinner. 
It was a tentative first step towards reconciliation. To my relief, my husband, having seen how deeply our son was committed, softened his stance and welcomed them warmly. The house, which had felt too large and silent, filled with life again as they walked through the door. The dinner was initially awkward, conversations tentative, but as the evening progressed, laughter began to replace the tension. My husband and I took genuine interest in their plans and aspirations, which included starting a business together that leveraged her online presence. Their enthusiasm was infectious, and for the first time in a long while, I felt a glimmer of the family unity we had lost. My daughter, however, remained the last holdout, her feelings still mixed and her skepticism apparent. Recognizing her feelings, the young couple approached her not with resentment but with understanding. They shared their hopes for the family's unity and expressed a sincere desire for her to be part of their lives and future celebrations. They also took the time to engage in activities she enjoyed, showing up at her art exhibitions and supporting her projects. Gradually, my daughter began to respond to their efforts. It wasn't an overnight change, but each small interaction, each shared moment, seemed to soften her stance. The breakthrough came one evening during a casual backyard barbecue when she and her future sister-in-law teamed up for a game of charades. The laughter and camaraderie of that game seemed to wash away the last of her reservations. Months later, at the wedding, my daughter stood as the maid of honor, her speech touching and heartfelt acknowledging her initial misgivings but also her joy at seeing her brother so happy and well-matched. The wedding itself was a beautiful affair, set in a lovely outdoor venue that reflected the couple's style and the healing that had taken place within our family. As I watched them exchange vows, surrounded by friends and family who had witnessed the struggles and now the joyful culmination, I felt a profound sense of peace. The journey had not been easy, but it had taught us all valuable lessons about love, forgiveness, and the enduring strength of family ties. The return of my son and his new wife to the family fold wasn't just a reunion, it was a new beginning, promising hope and happiness for the future.